Hello, my name is Mariana, and today this is a reading for Taurus. Um, so Taurus, I'm doing this reading as usual, as always, with my own tarot deck. So the cards that you'll see are from this deck. Um, and the interesting thing is that the bottom of the deck uh, card is peeking through me and is, for now, right, this is the card that is... Uh, trying to show itself but very timidly very shy because you know the empress is the card that represents taurus but there's something that is not fully revealed by this empress and that is yourself taurus so i feel like somehow because the interesting thing about your reading today is that i can see clearly the beginning of it but then the last part of it is still, I'm still trying to uncover it. And I feel like this is coming from you being a little bit shy or, well, are you being protective or something? Are you trying to keep something to yourself for the moment? Because I feel like everything is going so nicely, so fluidly, so happily, right? With the nine of wands. So although this card to me usually comes with showing me this path of flowers, actually the most important thing of this card actually, you know, being the opening card for a reading tour today, there's something about you enjoying the ride. The path, whichever one you're traveling, is like, is one that it makes you happy. It makes you enjoy being there it's like you are truly appreciating every single step of the way and so what i saw here you in the middle right in the middle of this beautiful path of flowers is just like a a happy kid a happy person and it's a little bit childlike because i'm seeing you taurus like you know hopping and skipping and dancing and smiling and maybe even singing or you know just mumbling something with your mouth but is like there is no shyness this is the interesting thing right it's like this version of yourself that is very well established that has maybe a reputation to uh hold on to and to preserve to protect right maybe this holds a little bit of a more spontaneous childlike personality right so this is is this seen by others or is this something that you just keep it to yourself right and i feel like somehow there is music involved if not music itself it could be just the rhythm of your steps or just you're doing something with the judgment card coming next actually this judgment was keeping the rhythm going just like a drum right so imagine like those beautiful how do you call it hand drums like the ones that you know the the american natives they use uh the round ones with you know that you it's like the sound of it is so what is the word it like it, it really fills up the room right uh and it's almost like the way that you're moving is making this rhythm go or it's like it's just like you know uh using this drum to to fill up a space or to fill up this path but i don't feel like you because this childlike energy it's a very contrasty energy to the judgment because the judgment there's a lot of self-awareness here and there's a lot of spontaneity in this childlike version of yourself so i feel like there is some sort of inherent wisdom to you that you are doing something just by skipping or hopping along your path and enjoying this ride that is very high level it's like it's reaching it's almost like the rippling effects but not 
like as water, right? It's not a drop in the ocean. It's more like sound based or it's like this, this rhythm of the drum. I don't know how to explain it, but it's reaching the higher realms, right? Something that you're doing maybe mindlessly or maybe so randomly or so um, like a daily thing, right? Just walking in your garden, right? Or doing a thing, something that you do every day. This, because you're doing it with joy and pleasure, this is reaching, it's almost like you are knocking on the door, you know, the heaven's door in a sense. But it's like with your innocence, right? You are reaching this higher realm. And this higher realm is giving you access to its wisdom because of the Ace of Swords. So the rhythm that you are very spontaneously carrying on and you're really you're really good at keeping the rhythm, right? You are good at keeping the rhythm, Taurus, for now. But I feel like this is opening this huge door to maybe this other dimension, perhaps, with the judgment that maybe we're talking about the Akashic Records, right? Something that you're doing without aiming for that. You're... Goal is not to do that, but you are reaching the truth. You are having access to something that is wise beyond your ears. Does it make sense? It's like because of your rhythm, because of your consistency, and because it's more than just consistency, right? Because you could do something repeti repetitively, but without joy, and you're doing it with joy, with pleasure. You are really enjoying doing this thing, right? Um, and so because of that, you are, it's almost like you are, it's almost like this, um, uh, not yin and yang. It's almost like this, uh, you don't know who's come before, right? The chicken or the egg. Is it your joy that is giving you access to the, the wisdom or is it the wisdom that you have found that is keeping you following this rhythm. You see what I mean? It's like one thing is feeding the other, is the truth that is feeding the rhythm, but it's also the rhythm that is feeding the truth. And I say that because here, well, let me, let me include already the two next, because we have a lot of swords. And this is where I feel like I can fully understand because so far, right? We have the Ace of Swords, the Seven, and the Six of Swords. So all of this is coming through as reaching awareness or it's almost like the sun peeking through the clouds, right? So it's almost like you are managing to fly above the clouds in a sense because you are, you are receiving access from this very diligent, consistent rhythm that you're using or that you're playing or that you are moving with. So the movement itself becomes stronger. It's like you realize that it's not just you there. It's like, it's almost like there is company, but not physical company, right? It's not that, you know, out of a blue, out of the blue, you're going to see, you're going to like realize that there are other people there with you in your garden. It's not that, it's almost like when you are so, what is the word? It's like with your guards down, right? With, without the protection um, stance that maybe you have to have when you are in this position but when you are just enjoying right you can relax and that's the reason why you are reaching like such a high place a high knowledge that is giving you access to the true direction to follow or to keep on going. It's almost like having the awareness that 
the direction that you're going is the right one, right? Knowing that you are in the right path, right? That this is the way to go, that this is the way to do. And having beside you, it's almost like spirits, spirit that is, it's like they are working with you. It's almost like I'm seeing the Seven of Swords as a flock of birds. So in a sense, you are part of the group and they are part of your group. You are leading because you have gained access to this specific knowledge or this specific awareness of something that is keeping you flowing or keeping you going in a certain rhythm that is really joyful and uplifting, right? So with the company of these other birds, which, you know, coming as birds, it's like they are, it's not coming through as messengers as much of like as lifting, helping to lift you. Because if you have gained access to this higher truth that is beyond and above the clouds, it's like in order to keep this rhythm, in order to keep this elevation, to keep your spirit high, it's like they show up to join you, to join this flock, right? And you move together, which is so beautiful. It's just like the, uh, you know, what is it called in in English? You know, those uh, flocks of birds that they just create this beautiful movement in the sky and it's just the most gorgeous thing ever. I've never seen one personally uh, just in pictures and videos, but it's just so beautiful. And so this is how you're moving because, and this is what maybe is fueling and feeding your knowledge that you are moving in the right direction because the sense that you're having when you're doing something and you're finding it fun, you're finding it joyful, right? You are enjoying it, like genuinely enjoying it. This is something that keeps you going. And the interesting thing about these two cards, the seven and the six, is that here there is this almost like this mentality of a group thinking as one and because of that there are numerous configurations and directions that you can go as a group right but as I said it's like this is not feeling like a you know a group of friends or a group of people right it's like you feeling like you have backup like a spiritual backup right flying in this flock of birds with you so it's all like a feeling like a sensation in your core or in your soul right because it's something very subtle it's something that maybe you can see but you know others cannot perceive it so with the six of swords coming next it's like everything that you were doing here almost as just just to have fun, right? Just to explore and see what you're capable of, of where this rhythm can take you and, you know, different movements that you can uh, test out. There is something that really uh, gets your attention, Taurus, I have to say that it's almost like if here you were playing with the Six of Swords, it's like there's something that really gets you and that really um it's like it's calling and it's almost like everything that was fun and light and just um joyful it becomes like a mission it becomes something that everything or everyone every bird in this flock needs to line up to move even faster or move towards some sort of target right and this target this is where it starts to get to get tricky because the target is yourself in a sense so the ace of wands right you are coming as this ace of wands in the center of this beautiful path of flowers but when you it's almost like you are in such a flow that you don't have you have awareness of this higher realm you have awareness of this pure truth that you don't have to think 
it's almost like moving without thinking, right? But suddenly there's something about maybe your self-awareness. It's almost like here, maybe you have such connection and sense of oneness to the environment that you're in, right? That you forget about yourself or maybe you forget about this Maybe we're talking about the self-conscious of your own power, of your own self, right? So when you lose sight of the environment, it's almost like the font is gone or like everything that you were enjoying suddenly is gone, right? Sorry. So with the Ace of Wands, I feel like there's a lot of like... It's a mix of self-awareness with self-consciousness. And this is something that I talked with a friend uh, last week, I guess. And to me, because, you know, English is my second language, those two words can be very confusing, right? Because of the different connotations of self-conscious and, you know, being self-aware, which to me, they could mean the same thing, although self-conscious is like very negative or it holds like some sort of um not fear of self but shame perhaps are you ashamed or are you reluctant to accept all that you are your full power or is that something that maybe you feel like it's um too heavy in one person I don't know. That's the tricky thing. It's like there's something about your own self that becomes almost like a mission that you have to address at this moment. Otherwise, otherwise what? Like what could happen that could be so detrimental to you, right? I feel like there is some sort of, it's almost like you were in this beautiful bubble of enjoying yourself, having fun, really elevating your frequency, really accessing a beautiful truth and kind of playing with that energy. But then suddenly something strikes you and everything or, you know, all of that flock of birds that was, you know, flying with you. It's like all of that gets directed to yourself. Maybe we're talking about your ego or this um this fiery nature and you know negative side of the ego right and so this was already tricky enough right to really figure out but when these two cards came together at, right at the end of your reading the self-consciousness that i feel like maybe you are just maybe are you overwhelmed by that or are you feeling like you are being split apart because this is what the lovers card is talking about so we have the four of cups and the lovers so it's almost like this four of cups now that i'm you know really <laughs> digging into these two energies this feels cohesive this feels too stretched apart so I hope that I can explain this because it is very, it's almost like it's all sensation based, right? It's something that may be happening like in your heart or like in your emotional body. And it's bringing you to lose your sense of stability. So the four to me is a number that always brings like very stable energy very steady and solid energy right so this feels like there is cohesiveness there is coherence in your emotional body but somehow when you well if you are paying too much attention in yourself or even like you know when you are just looking at yourself to you know find those defects or find those flaws or find those mistakes it's almost like you are aiming to find all that you have done wrong so you are 
maybe pushing yourself to become self-conscious of yourself. And this is where it is. It's almost like this is when you feel like you are falling perhaps because, you know, with this uh, lover's card, it's almost like here when you were balanced in a sense or when you were coherent, it's like the proximity between your lower self, meaning your human self and this higher self that is represented by these two cups here because you had access to something that was, you know, higher frequency or coming from this higher dimension. Suddenly you feel like there is this big stretch or there is this sense of separation, right? It's like if everything was, you know, connected, right? All of the parts were connected and you were exploring this very, uh, with a lot of playfulness, suddenly the point of connection is so thin and so fragile that maybe you are, are you fearing that you're going to lose that? Is that something that is really like emotional and really, you know, significant in terms of maybe losing touch with your heart, right? Or feeling separated from the divine? I don't know, really Taurus, this is something that uh, I'm curious to see in the extended. So I'm going to pull more cards for you. Um, and also I'm going to pull from the astrological runes in the extended reading. So if you want to join me there, I'll be happy to see you. If not, I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.